Hey, everybody. How's it going? So it looks like Apple settled a lawsuit that's been going on for over five years now over them giving customers refurbished devices instead of new devices when they traded them in under Apple Care or Apple Care Plus. And I would like to dig into what this lawsuit is about because I think a lot of people are going to read the TLDR and potentially get the wrong idea. Because one of the statements Apple made here is a statement that I actually agree with because it is the basis of my company. However, their actions and their statements differ here, and that is why I believe this lawsuit got as far as it did. And I also want to talk about just class action lawsuits and how ineffective I find them to be in general as a means of actually solving problems. So this says Apple agreed to pay $95 million to settle a lawsuit claiming refurbished devices aren't equivalent to new devices. Apple on Friday reached a $95 million settlement and blah, blah, blah. They um, violated Magnuson Moss Warranty Act and other U.S. laws by replacing consumers' devices covered by Apple Care with refurbished devices. So they were replacing your stuff. If you bought Apple Care, Apple Care Plus, instead of giving you a new one, they were giving you a refurbished one. And that is why they lost to the tune of $95 million. Apple's repair terms and conditions for the U.S. state that when servicing a customer's product, the company may use parts or products that are new or refurbished and equivalent to new in performance and reliability. Now, this is, this is um, the part that gets very tricky. If you say you're using new or refurbished parts in the service agreement, then we would have no lawsuit here at all. When they say equivalent to new in performance and reliability, that's where it starts to get tricky. And that's where I don't want consumers to come away with the idea that overall refurbished devices are always going to be horrible because there were weasel words used here and because Apple's implementation of their refurbishing is done in, in my opinion, a weaselly way, which we will get into later in this video. I understand there are a lot of people that dislike my criticism of Apple who may just decide to click off here. Look in the timestamp down below if you want to check out the part of this video where I d demonstrate why even you would probably be mad if you got back devices like this that were done via a systemically bad refurbishing process. So as the class includes all U.S. residents who purchased this plan and are, again, the settlement is going to be divided equally among all of the class members from people who bought the in yeah, July 20th, 2012. So that's going to be a lot of people that, and it looks like about 63 to $68 million are what's going to be going to the people. So about $30 million is going to the attorneys. Again, you have a $95 million settlement, 63 to 68 million being divided amongst everybody who got a device under Apple Care in 2012 and now. So this is why I despise class action lawsuits. These lawyers are going to walk away with $30 million and all of the all, all of the, the people involved in the class are going to have what, you know, what I what, what I have in my refrigerator. I have a bunch of these little 68 cent checks that I get every time I'm involved in a class action lawsuit I didn't even know about. And I don't even bother going to the bank to deposit it because the amount of time it takes to unlock my phone and log into the app and hit deposit check is not worth the 66 cents or 68 cents that I got from the class action. Um, I'd rather just have it as a little thing that I put tack on my refrigerator just to, you know, for, for fun. And it says here, it is anticipated the class will receive between 63 to 60 68 million. Again, that, that's a joke. Uh, Apple vigorously denied that refurbished devices are inferior, but it opted to settle with the plaintiffs given the time and cost that would be associated with a continued trial, according to the court documents. Now, let's go over this for a moment. When you see the type of repair that I do on my channel, most of it is refurbing and a lot of it is using parts that were not new. I do often use chips that I purchased from mouser.com that are actually new, but I also often use things called donor boards. These are boards that have probably only been turned on once or twice for testing and they didn't work all together so they just got tossed aside and I will often pull pieces off of these boards. Now let's just take something like a pull-up resistor for instance. So if you have a pull-up resistor on a low voltage line like 100 kilo ohms or a million ohms, this is not something where it's it's going to really degrade over time. This is something where third, I would expect 30 to 40 years from now, that resistor to be working just as fine as it was today. And when you're talking about a resistor that has so little current going through it on an area of the board that doesn't get hot, I have absolutely no problem with taking that off, putting it onto a board, and telling a customer this is just as good as new. Because for all functional intents and purposes, it is. In the seven or eight years that I've been doing board repair myself and filming it, I don't think I've ever had one of these pull-up resistors fail except for there being a hole in the board or there being liquid damage in that area, much less failing just out of the blue 
So I have no problem taking a resistor that's probably only had power gone through it once, taking it off of here and putting it on this board. And if a customer is going to come to me and say, I want to sue you, I want to file a chargeback, I want a discount because that resistor wasn't new from mouser.com, for all intents and purposes, in my opinion, they're screwing with me. They are that that's not a legitimate concern that's not a legitimate complaint when you look at failure rates when you look at why things fail and when you consider the fact that using a donor board where i know where everything already is and i don't have to if i'm replacing a bank of 10 resistors have to look up the value of each one on the schematic and then look it up in the book if that allows me to be able to do a repair in an economically viable way where i can say yes to it rather than saying no because i spend less time on the total repair i can spend more time on the diagnosis and figure out what's wrong with it, that is something that I will do. I would say that that fits the spirit and the letter of use parts or products that are new or refurbished and equivalent to new in performance and reliability. That's 100% equivalent to new in performance and reliability. Let's say we were talking about a graphics chip. I, you, you know, graphics chip is, it's kind of like socks or underwear. I mean, you're, 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 you, they, they get a lot of mileage. You can't say that a six-year-old GPU chip that is designed with a flip chip design that's getting heated up to 80 or 90 or 100 Celsius and getting uses on it regularly, that's not the same as a resistor that's you know, having 0.000001 amps go through it. If you were to use that, that is not going to be equivalent to new in performance and reliability at all. Or, and so let's talk about what consumers are actually pissed at here. At the end of the day, I don't think consumers should be pissed off at getting things that are refurbished, nor do I believe that consumers should immediately believe that refurbished devices in, are not going to be equivalent to uh, new in performance and reliability just because Apple did the lie to them. Here, Apple vigorously denied that refurbished devices are inferior. I agree. I would also vigorously deny that refurbished devices are inferior. That being said, what they're mad at is how Apple is doing the refurbishing. Because how Apple does the refurbishing very often is complete and utter garbage. And if you're someone on our Apple that hates my guts, that doesn't like my channel, doesn't like my titles, doesn't like my voice, doesn't like my face, guess what? You should still be mad at Apple for how they refurbish devices. Because the way they refurbish devices may be the way they eventually refurbish a device for you. And if you like their products, if you appreciate their products, if you want to continue using their products, then you should advocate the same way I advocate that they do a better job of refurbishing those products for their customers. So let's talk about a couple of times that they've done horrible refurbishing that I've gone over on this channel. Let's go over something like the 2011 uh, extended warranty program for the 2011 MacBooks that had GPU failures. So these machines had widespread GPU failures, and in 2015, Apple finally admitted it, and they decided to replace these boards for customers. Now, they were replacing them with refurbished boards, and the refurbished boards were refurbished in what is, in my opinion, and I will let you all decide if you think that you share my opinion, a horrible way. So typically, when you do BGA rework, you're going to heat the board. If you heat the board too much, the board is going to start getting this yellowish, brownish tint to it, kind of like if you start burning your food. You know, it's going to start turning a little bit darker. It's not going to have that the the you know shinier, lighter look to it. It's going to start looking hazy. Now, you tell me what you think of this refurbishing. This is from a video I did three years ago: the horrible truth about Apple's repeated engineering failures. Take a look and tell me what you think. I'm going to show you a reworked section of the board and the non-reworked section of the board. And you tell me if you think these boards are new. Now, you may say, okay, fine. They're only going to refurbish the boards. They're not going to give you new ones. This is not what BGA rework is supposed to look like. It's not supposed to look like you put a portion of the board into a barbecue for five hours and just left it there. And if you look closely, you will see that the top section of the board Look, everything looks silvery and nice. And then when you go to the section of the board underneath the chip that they replaced, everything is completely brown. Now, I have had employees in the past that did rework that look like this. And this was grounds for termination. And the two of the people that did work like this were terminated shortly after I hired them. And they did work like this repeatedly when they were not, you know, I wound up having to buy new boards for customers because I'm not going to put this back into somebody's computer. And I tried showing them how to not do this. They continue to do it. They were let go. This is unacceptable. I would not let this go in a customer device. And I have gone over the specific process to avoid this happening in a video dating back seven years ago. So this video, Zalmao ZMR 6200C for MacBook Pro Logic Board Repair, I go over the specific process and everything that I do to avoid this happening. And as you can see, when I do it, 
you have this section of the board over here looks just as vibrant as this section of the board over here. So again, I, I admittedly, I should have probably put it under the microscope seven years ago when I actually did this so you could get a better look at it. But when you run the profile properly, this doesn't happen. The reason that that happens is if you are running the profile too fast at too high a temperature. Now, why would you run the profile too fast at a too high a temperature? So you could get as much work done as quickly as possible. If you're focusing on quantity and money rather than on quality and reliability, that's going to happen. It is not that refurbished devices are inherently less reliable. It's that when you do crappy refurbishing, it is inherently less reliable. And I would not want customers to have the takeaway from this lawsuit be that refurbished devices are inherently less reliable. I disagree with that. I would put the refurbished devices that we refurbish at this store up against new Apple products any day. The type of refurbishing that Paul does or that I do, when we focus on every single little piece and go over the board over and over again and try to get everything as perfect as it can be, that type of refurbishing is going to last for a long time. The type of refurbishing where the board looks like it was put in a barbecue, of course that's not going to last. And now we, there are more reasons for people to be pissed. Let's just take the machine that happened one year after this. There was a machine that Apple made where the board was kind of doing this inside the machine. And as a result of it, of the flexion on the joints, this one chip for the GPU buck converter that I also go over in the same video happens to have its solder joints kind of start cracking and coming apart. And you could see them, they look horrible. Now, there are two ways that you can address this. The way we address it in our store when refurbishing it is we will get rid of the old solder, get on some new solder, and make the joints look perfect, nice and pristine. And the way that Apple was addressing this in their extended warranty program was they were taking it off, they were putting this what looks like a little piece of shoe rubber on the chip so that the chip gets smashed against the case. So now that you have this, th this little piece of rubber there, the chip is going to get pushed against the board to try and make it work again. It's kind of like if your headphone plug stops working properly. I don't know if any of you did this in, in high school, but like before I knew how to solder properly and really do a good job, I used to actually use tape. To, to, to put pressure on the headphone plug while it was in my, my little RCA CD player so that it would kind of push it into place so that it would work. And obviously that, that, that doesn't work. That doesn't last more than a day until you destroy both your headphones and the Walkman. But you can see this over here. This is what they were doing. So they were putting what looks like a little piece of shoe rubber under there and smashing it against the board. And as you can see, the quality of the solder joints here is absolutely horrendous. And there's no excuse for the low quality of the solder joints that they were giving back to customers with this little piece of shoe rubber there rather than doing an actual fix. And material for the pads on the PCB is to put what I can only imagine is some sort of little cutout of shoe rubber and glue it to the top of the chip so that it would get smashed against the case of the machine. Instead of changing the material that's used to bond it, they're just going to put a piece of rubber there to push it onto the board. And as you can imagine, this is not something that lasts and has resulted in hundreds and hundreds of these terrible, terrible refurbs ending up at our store for repair. You can simply confirm this for yourself by opening up a 2012 A1398 MacBook Pro Retina that has never been refurbished by Apple and one that has been refurbished by Apple. Checking out this chip and you'll see that the non refurb it's not really difficult to do a better job here. I would argue that the soldering that Anel did drunk three or four years ago on camera or that I did drunk six or seven years ago on camera once just for the for entertainment was considerably better than the quality that they were giving back to the customer in, in this example. And I could go on for days. I'm not because I want this video to be under an hour, but I could go on infi ad infinitum when it comes to iPhone repair, when it comes to doing issues with iPhone 6 Plus Touch IC. Uh, they do not give p customers back refurbished phones that would last as long as, let's say, a phone that was refurbished by Mark Schaefer or Jessa Jones or Jesse Cruz or anybody like that. There's a particular method that they have to dealing with Touch IC so that it doesn't come back. Or iPhone 6 sevens with an audio IC failure. If you just replace the chip, it's going to happen again. However, if you put a jumper on the pad and you do it properly, even if it does shift in there, it's not as likely to fail again. There are many ways that you could refurbish devices so that you know in your heart you're never going to see that customer again unless they come by to buy a Christmas dinner. And that's what we go for here. We go for the type of refurbishing when it comes to independent repair where we are never going to see you again because our primary profits are not from you buying a new one because you're so pissed off at your old one breaking, because our profits come from when you tell all of your friends that I had this thing fixed four years ago when the manufacturer said it was impossible and I never had to go back to them with that same problem again. We make money when our fixes last. 
They make money when their fixes fail and you have to get another one. This is why people are probably pissed off. This is why this lawsuit happened. I don't think this lawsuit had to do with consumers getting refurbished devices. Because if you got a board that was refurbished, if you had a resistor that was picked off of, you know, a donor board instead of mouser, let's face it, you're never going to tell, you're never going to know unless it fails. The reason enough people got pissed that this became a class action lawsuit is because the refurbishing that Apple was doing for many years was horrible, horrible quality. It was worse than what you get here from the shipping guy two weeks after he got promoted to board repair technician. Uh, honestly, I almost feel like I'm insulting Dan here by even comparing the work that he did one or two weeks into the job to the work that's being done here in any way, shape, or form because it was way better. I don't want consumers to walk away from this thinking that refurbishing is bad because Apple was defending the fact that their, refurb that their refurbishing is as good as new and then they lost. Apple lost because the refurbishing that they were doing was horrible. And I think that the takeaway from this is to do better refurbishing. Doing better refurbishing means focusing on quality over quantity, and it means focusing on reliability and durability over getting as much stuff out the door as humanly possible. And that's really going to be something that, uh, again, I don't have much control over for them, but I just want to hope that independent repair is not collateral damage of Apple losing on the claim that the refurbished devices are inferior. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And I hope that that's, if you're one of the people in this class action lawsuit, I, I, I hope you wind up getting more than 68 cents. It, this really does make me cynical. Like Again, out of a $95 million settlement, 30 million is going to the lawyers. Like really, again, the lawyers are the winners at the end of it. And at the end of the day, 95 million bucks to Apple, if you have between your house and you know and your bank accounts and your cash, if let's say you have ten thousand bucks, this would be like if I find you four dollars. If you have ten thousand dollars, this is like I took four dollars from you. It's nothing. It's a joke. It doesn't affect you at all. You're gonna make that back in less than an hour. And if you consider the amount of money that Apple saved by using poorly refurbished devices instead of well refurbished devices. I'm not even talking about if they had used new. Just the amount of money that Apple saved by using crappily refurbished devices rather than doing good quality refurbishing so that customers wouldn't be pissed. They saved way more than $95 million over the past nine years on that. When you consider how much Apple brags in their earnings calls about how much money they make from services from Apple Care and Apple Care Plus and subscriptions, they saved so much money. $95 million is nothing to them. So this is not going to teach Apple a lesson. It's not enough to get them to change their behavior. It's not enough money to actually uh, change or, you know, fix or make whole the people that got a poorly refurbished device. This is just a way for lawyers to make $30 million. Lastly, before I end the video, I just wanted to shill my live channel. This is where I toss all sorts of just random crap, whether it's, you know, like, Again, uh, me eating sushi, uh, a weird hotel, Erica trying to fix a board on live stream, uh, me driving for several hours through Keene, New Hampshire, me driving to Lake Winnipesaukee, Erica trying to drive my car. That was actually... That was actually kind of scary, but uh, <laughs> no, uh, you know, like me driving to iPad to uh, iPad rehab from New Hampshire, uh, a kitty. So you, you'll see a lot of just random kind of throwaway ch uh, content on this channel. But I am going to be traveling to Tennessee and a couple of other parts of the U.S. over the next few weeks. So if you'd like to keep up and just, I uh, guess, you know. Listen, Erica and I argue in the car. You are more than welcome to check out my throwaway channel, which I will link to down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all next time.